Hi, welcome to this video on expanding double brackets. If you want to pause the video right now and take down these important notes, and then you can resume and focus on what's happening in the maths. All right, so I'm assuming you've done that, we're gonna carry on here. Now, if you want to know how to expand double brackets, it's important that you know how to do multi-digit multiplication. So, for example, 13 times 22. Because if you can do that, doing this follows the exact same pattern. All right, and allow me to explain. <clears throat> if I wanted to do 13 times 22, the way we do this is we go 10, because that one is in the tens column, that has a value of 10. So 10 times 20 and then 10 times 2. And then we do 3 times 20 and 3 times 2. Whatever method you might choose to do that, you might choose to have a grid method, you might choose to do short multiplication, long multiplication. If you actually look at what you're doing, you are multiplying each of the digits in here by each of the digits in there. <clears throat> so if I expand this out, if I say that this is actually 10 plus 3 times 20 plus 2, you start to see something that is very similar to this. Now obviously I can't make this, you know, 4x and that 2x because it doesn't work in the same way. But if you have a look at this, my processing will be precisely the same. I will do 10 times 20, giving me 200. I will do 10 times 2, giving me 20. I will do 3 times 20, giving me 60. And I'll do 3 times 2, giving me 6. Then I'll add all of this up, so that should give me 200 and 80. 6. And if I multiply that together, you can quickly check that in your calculator, I'll get up 286. All right now, <clears throat> this method here that we're using is the exact same method that we're going to have a look at and use when we multiply out and expand out double brackets. Okay, so a typical question that you could get in an exam will literally be, it might even just be one word, it could just be expand. And I'll code on there, expecting you to know what that means. Now, expand does not mean to write it so that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as you've seen um, some math jokes showing. Um, all it means is that I want you to expand, uh, I want you to take these brackets and multiply them out together. Now, you should already be able to multiply out something like that, where I go 2 times x and 2 times 1, giving me 2x plus 2. You should be able to do that. If you can't, please have a look somewhere on YouTube for um, expanding brackets, or perhaps have a look at one of my other videos. All right, so in this case, the problem is I don't only have a single term. I mean, I don't only have a single number in front of my bracket. I've actually got two others. But if we follow the same principle, I have to expand out. Uh, I have to multiply every single one of the terms in here by every single one of the terms in here. Okay, All the terms in the first bracket multiplied by all the terms on the second bracket. And there are two main ways of doing this. <clears throat> I can follow a smiley face method, which basically means I go make an eyebrow, make an eyebrow, make a mouth, and a chin. That, and I multiply along those lines. Because this way I'm ensuring that I'm multiplying every term in the bracket, in the first bracket, by every term in the second bracket, provided I'm multiplying along the lines. Um, and I like this method because it's quite visual, it gives you a nice two little eyes, a mouth, and a chin. I, I, I prefer the visual way of remembering this. Um, the other way of using this is the FOIL method, which is simply first outer inner last. FOIL, like that. And if I multiply first by first, that's x times x. Outer, the two outer ones, x times 2. Inner, the two inner ones, 4 times x. And my last terms together, so the last terms in both the brackets, 4 times 2. And if we do that, um, you'll see that we're going to get up the exact same thing. <clears throat> Alright, so let's, let's continue with this. x times x we know is x squared. Please don't tell me 2x. Can't tell you how many times I've seen that. It's heartbreaking because you know what you're doing. You just make a tiny little error. x times x is 2x. Uh, and sorry, x times x is x squared, not 2x. Please be careful of that. Um, 4 times 2, that's going to give me 8. And I do 4 times x, which gives me 4x. And x times 2, which gives me 2x. Alright, so now if I um, rewrite this, I've got x squared. I've got my 4x and my 2x, and I'm going to connect my like terms together. So 4x plus 2x, that's going to give me 6x. And lastly, I have my positive 8 there. If I write this out here, and we get some answers for this. Um, we have x squared over here, 2x over here, 4x here. 
and 8 over there. And again, if I collect my like terms, <coughs> I'm going to end up with x squared plus 6x plus 8. So it doesn't really matter what method you use, if you prefer a nice visual way, smile your face, if you prefer something a little bit more rigorous, mathematical, um, <coughs> you can do the FOIL method, first term, outer terms, inner terms, last terms. Um, whatever, whatever you choose, whatever method you choose to do, as long as you are multiplying all terms in the first bracket with all the terms in the second bracket. Okay, um, let's make this a little bit more challenging. <clears throat> I am, I'm by the way, I'm going to stick with the smiley face method because I like it. It's pretty, um, and it's yeah. I, I just prefer the visual way. Um, all right, so let's have a look here. Let's see. I've got x minus three x plus. I don't know, 4, or something like that. Uh, and if I were to expand this one out, the only difference between this one and the previous one is that I now have a negative sign, and I've got to be aware of that. This is one term, it's negative 3. Okay, so I'm not going to be multiplying by 3, I'm multiplying by negative 3. Alright, so now I do the exact same thing. x times x gives me x squared. Negative 3 times 4 is not 12, it's negative 12. We've got to be careful of that. We've got to remember our negative signs. Be aware of them. Uh, x times 4, that's going to give me 4x. And negative 3 times x, that's going to give me negative 3x. Alright, so now I collect my like terms. And again, please make note, I have put in my negative there. Very, very important. Alright, so x squared. I can't collect anything else with that. That's just x squared. Negative 3x and 4x, well that actually gives me, well, negative 3 and uh, 4 is actually just 1. So we write that as, instead of 1x, we just write that as x, and of course it's positive. And lastly, my minus 12. Okay, so when you collect your like terms, please be aware of your negatives. When you're expanding them, please be aware of your negatives. You're not dealing with a 3, you're dealing with a negative 3. That operation in front of the 3 belongs to the 3, okay? Um, I'll do one more, make it slightly more challenging, and then I've got a few examples for you to do. Right. <clears throat> okay, so now you're not only going to get um, these sorts of things where the coefficient of x is 1. In other words, um, you could get something like this, where it's 3x plus 1, and, I don't know, 2x minus 3, something like that. Right? That is entirely possible. So you need to be aware of how to deal with these and how they differ. Again here, I'm just going to do a nice little circle there, so I remember that that's a negative 3, so I don't forget it when I'm doing this. And then I just follow the exact same principles. I just have to be aware that I am going to get out of x squared, but it's not x squared by itself, because it's 3 times 2, that gives me 6x, alright? So 6, uh, sorry, 3 times 2 gives me 6, and x times x gives me x squared. 1 times negative 3, well that's pretty easy, that's a negative 3. Again, be aware of your negatives. Be aware of them. 1 times 2x, that's just 2x. And 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. Again, be aware of your negatives. Alright, so now I'm going to collect my like terms, so I've got 6x squared from there. I'm going to collect these together, negative 9x plus 2x gives me negative 7x. And lastly, my negative 3 just goes on at the end as my constant. Alright, so that's how we expand brackets. Provided you are aware of your, um, your negative signs and you don't forget about them, uh, it's actually quite an easy process to do. Alright, so I've got a few questions here. Um, if you want to just pause the video, have a go at them, and um, yeah, I will then put the answers afterwards. Alright, so I'm assuming you've paused the video, let's have a look at answer to question number one. Okay, there we go, answer to question number one. Again, no negatives involved in this one, um, but make sure you're using your, your foil or your smiley face correctly. Um, answer for question two, if you haven't got question two, maybe pause now, have a go at that. Is the answer for question two. Negative signs there, remember, when you multiply the negative four and the negative two, you actually end up with a positive eight, right? So bear that in mind. 
Uh, and then the article question three, the only difference here, you had a negative sign, but you also had that 2x. So make sure that you end up with 2x squared up at the top there, okay? 2x squared. All right, that's it for me. Hope you had a good time, and hope you now know how to expand double brackets. Cheers.